We've seen thousands of protesters out on the streets today, all of them demanding freedom for Palestine and calling for the arrest of Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Many here saying that he is a war criminal who has committed genocide in the Gaza Strip. The police responded with plenty of security, creating an entire security perimeter right round the Capitol building behind me. But we also saw some confrontations between protesters and police with arrests and the use of pepper spray by some officers outside of the Capitol. Inside the Capitol building, Prime Minister Netanyahu spoke to the two houses, to the House of Representatives and to the Senate, and he said that the protesters outside should be ashamed of themselves. He urged a message of unity, saying that a victory when it comes against Hamas would be a victory not just for Israel, but also for the United States. And he said it was a time to stand strong together. But of course, he was speaking there to a divided chamber. Some Democrat lawmakers chose not to turn up for his speech in protest to what they believe uh, is a genocidal campaign against the Palestinian people. We even saw some protests inside the chamber during the course of his speech. And remember, Kamala Harris, the vice president, she would normally be in the chamber presiding over uh, a joint session speech to Congress. She was not there. She said that she had a scheduling conflict and instead was out on the campaign trail. But it certainly speaks to that disunity in politics at the moment when it comes to Israel's actions in Gaza and when it comes to the strong, staunch support of the United States for Israel. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is due to meet President Joe Biden on Thursday in the White House. That meeting having been delayed by several days because of President Biden's COVID-19 diagnosis, we're likely to see once again strong support from the US President for the actions in Israel. Nick Harper, CNA, Washington.